So, at Talladega this weekend, pretty uh, pretty busy. A lot of a lot of storylines, a lot of topics, even leading into the race. Uh, a lot of conversation and concern about the race car. We had a lot of uh, you know guys talking about the hits being hard, and um, man, that has really been a big you know. If you haven't heard about this, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. You're not paying attention. Um, but apparently, um, the drivers are are absolutely sure without without question that the car is too, way too stiff. And um, when you actually dive in and look at the design of the, the car itself, you can kind of see how that absolutely could be the case. And we're having guys that are – so here's, here's my opinion. So we're having more people step up and say, I've gotten I've, – I've got a concussion. Those are the uh, – we got Kurt Busch and Alex Bowman, who's out of the race car this year alone with with a concussion and those are the only two we know about right uh we are there is the, the, let's not fool ourselves right drivers will get a concussion and race with it and would not shock me if several of these guys either got a concussion unknowingly and got back in the car or knew that they had a, you know suffered some sort of a concussion in a crash and continue to race and so but we only know about these two and that's uh that's a big step up in percentages of people speaking out about having a problem in a certain in, in any particular year and so we absolutely have a problem with this race car they're gonna the, you know nascar is gonna fix it they need to um you know they, they need to get the back of the car but it wouldn't hurt for them to focus on the rest of the vehicle as well but get the car to where it absorbs more impacts denny went right into the media and he went scorched earth like <laughs> he you know said things like there needs to be new leadership change the leadership he then um you know clarified on sunday he didn't mean that they need to fire steve phelps he just feels like that the people that are in charge of this particular design on the car uh, failed uh, to see some very critical things as the car was being put, you know, car was being tested and all these things, right? And maybe he is telling the truth. Maybe he's backtracking a little bit. Maybe he got a little bit too, uh, you know, too personal or too frustrated in his media session, uh, and he doesn't really want Phelps out of there. Phelps doesn't have anything really to do with designing the car, but... Um, I mean, these type of things do fall on those the shoulders of the people at the top. Sure. Uh, Chase Elliott also backs his, you know, backs all this up. All the drivers, I think, would admit that this is a problem. But Chase Elliott went into the media as well and said that um, the new car is taking a step backwards in regard to safety. And um, I think that's a fair statement. So. They made this, you know, the car The car is designed very well in terms of being a, you know, being a, being a race car, the independent rear suspension, the, 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 the tra transaxle. When you look at this car, I mean, it's, it, they, they created this thing from scratch, but it can't, you know, it can't take a, it tank, can't take a crash very well. They did crash test the crap out of this thing but i remember way back when um william byron hit the wall in a test at california and got out and said that was pretty uh that was a really really hard hit that comment kind of stuck with me and a lot of other people and the drivers have been talking about it all year long and so now finally i think it's gotten to a point to where with all of the crashes and hits that we saw with the tire issues at texas drivers now know that it could be their heads being concussed any minute, any moment, right? I think that, I think the, it was a concern. We go to Texas, we have a lot of tire issues. We have a lot of guys hitting the wall, backing into the wall, which is basically probably the worst way you can hit with this car. And now drivers are almost in a panic for NASCAR to help them, right? Mm -hmm. Um they're they're going to the media because the media is kind of the last resort uh, to get it to get something done right to really get somebody's attention. You really don't want to go to the media 
you want NASCAR to to react and things to get fixed without having to go to that go to that um, situation. But so a dri- when a driver feels like he's out of options and feels like he's not being heard or really has to have something done immediately or really needs to get his message across quickly, urgently, they go into the media and they over speak. Right? You, when you get into the media and you're gonna you're gonna try to when you're wanting to be heard, when you're wanting somebody to understand this is something important to you and you're a driver, you go to the media, you overspeak, you, you pour it on thick, mm. right? So that, cause that's your only shot mm-hmm. standing there in your media session, you're going to get this point across. And so you kind of overdo it a little bit with the hope that this doesn't fail. This, this attempt to get attention or get, get this message across is not going to, it's going to work. And so <clears throat> I think that, uh, you know, that was a little bit of what Denny was doing. It was a tactic uh, to to get this message out to the public so that the fans and everybody would understand the severity of the situation and the importance of, of some action. And so, with that said, I mean, NASCAR has been working on a new rear clip for some time. They have been, wor- they have been understanding that this is a problem and have been trying to fix this for a while. But it's just not happening quick enough. That's what I wanted to ask is that the there's pro- more media no, no. sessions and there are opportunities to fix the car quickly, right? You know, they're, in, in some, there, they're continually in front of the media yeah. saying it. And Well, the, the, there, there's a lot. One of the problems is the car is dangerous. If you back it into a wall, you, 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 you're more than likely going to get a concussion than when you would in the old car. But that's not a... That That's not an exaggeration. No, it seems accurate. Yes. Yep. And you want it changed right now. Is that possible? No. Okay. NASCAR can't change it right now. If they go in there and make adjustments to this car or cut bars out of it for, ne- for the next race and you go back it into the wall and bust the fuel cell and now you're burning, you're on fire. You know, you, so NASCAR has, you know, they've been in this business a long time. And they know. They know that they, they could create more problems or even more severe problems, uh, believe it or not, uh, than a concussion, by making the wrong move here. They have to make sure they get this right. They are in. They could be held liable if they were to make a mistake. Um, and that's, that that, to Denny's point. All of this kind of does go back to the original design of the car. So there is a little bit of, you know, it, it, they want all this to crush, right? They want this back end to crush, right? So that's great. I mean, the old car did that. But this car's a little bit shorter in the back. There's not a lot of room between the bumper, the fuel cell, and there's really no room between the fuel cell and the, and, and the um, transaxle. And so the transaxle can puncture the fuel cell if you shove that fuel cell into the ground like with the old car it's going into that transaxle there is a steel plate between it but do you know for sure that it will protect you do you want to try it do you want to be in that car nope when that fuel cell erupts nope and so if they make the back of the car to where it absorbs too much um it could also you know you you get you get close enough to that fuel cell you burst the fuel cell, or something can protrude and, and, and puncture it, with, you know, another race car or part or whatever. Some of these, you know, when you look at the back bumper of the car, you'll see these little struts, these aluminum struts that are, yep. that those could puncture the fuel cell. Yeah, you know, you, that's all scary. It like, is, I, right. yeah. yeah. So think about it. Uh, I remember at Bristol one time, Sterling Marlin and his team backed our car into the wall, uh, the number 22 Maxwell House car, Ford, Junior Johnson. Back the car into the wall, push the, push the fuel cell down, the, the, uh, the deck lid and everything. To get the arrow back right, they set jack stands on the back. On, they set jack stands on the fuel cell, raised up the jack stands to hold the deck lid up, bungee corded all that into the car, right? Sent him back out on the racetrack. He spun out, backed into the wall again, and shoved the, shoved the jack stand through the fuel cell, through the top of the fuel cell. And giant ball of fire. Turns yes. one and two at Bristol. And uh, he gets out, 
Um, but it was a big, nasty thing. Chocolate Myers runs over there to pull him out of the car. It was a really, really big ball of fire. So when those fuel cells puncture, if you got a lot of fuel in there, it's going to be intense. And so they just have to get that right. And that, to me, is another, like, oh, well, I want to, personally, me, I want to go, well, damn it, you know, why did we have to, why did we have to, go this far with this design? Why did this car have to be so far removed from what we were doing to begin with? Mm. Why did we have to jump to the other extreme? I mean, we've basically got a sports car Mm -hmm. running around these ovals, a car designed for road courses now racing at mile-and-a-half oval tracks. That's right. These, you know, this is an IMSA car Mm. pretty much, and the IMSA guys run their cars on road courses. They don't run around ovals with walls. They right. don't they don't smash into walls right. every time they spin out. Um and so that's a little frustrating for me personally. Me me personally, I wish we hadn't went so far away from where we were uh with the with the overall design of the car. But and I'm I agree with Denny to a point that the whole thing needs to be revisited in terms of being able to absorb impacts. When we look at the rear impacts, we need to fix that, of course. But we also want to try to also improve side impacts, frontal impacts. Hey, man, just because Cody Ware gets out of that car after a nasty head-on vicious impact at Texas doesn't mean that, oh, well, that checks that box. We don't need to really look in that area. If we find and learn and improve the rear, we need to take that understanding and everything we've got better and try to find other ways around the rest of the car to implement that same sort of understanding. And, you know, everybody has said, you know, the big talking point this weekend has been, well, you know, safety's a never-ending quest. If that is really your truth, then what you learn at the back of this race car when you fix what is obviously wrong, you apply it around the rest of the car as well. Because I don't like the side impacts. Mm. Kevin Harvick you know, has a side impact at St. Louis earlier in the year, said it's the hardest hit of his career. Yep. So this thing is a tank. If you like that conversation, you ought to listen to the entire podcast. The Dale Jr. Download is available on all major podcast platforms. Hey, guys, I'm here to tell you three reasons why I love our sponsor, Tire Pros. Number one, Tire Pros loves cars as much as I do. Number two, They have great service. Number three, they're committed to getting you back out on the road. Plus, they've got this really cool logo. Uh, Dale, that's four reasons. And they have over 600 locations, 24-7 roadside assistance, a great selection, and a best-in-class tire warranty. Tire pros, love the drive.